Well, you're listening to Quad Dot Rocks, God of the World and Other Things. I'm Kenny Price, your host. Our mission, you got it, advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. Hey, 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 this is Season 18, Episode 380, titled Six Christian Ideals for Living. Subtitle, The Divine Life of God in Living Pictures. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. This one verse is power-packed with instructions for us to camp out on for a lifetime. There is so much depth and wisdom here that it qualifies as a life verse we should all commit to memory. The commandment is straightforward, dwell on these things, but it packs quite a punch. Over the next several Mondays, we will walk into this new year with words of encouragement that are game changers for the quality of life we can enjoy in 2024 if we choose. The good news is the picture is totally reliant upon us and not on our circumstances, which are volatile and fleeting. The person who lives their life based on present circumstances finds themselves on an emotional roller coaster that can easily slip and plunge into a decayed mental health state. This verse contains six adjectives picturing Christian ideals. Without these, no ideals can exist. The ideals of true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, moral excellence, and praiseworthy. Renowned Greek scholar A.T. Robertson wrote in 1930 in his classical work, Word Pictures in the New Testament, that these six ideals are pertinent now when so much filth is flaunted before the world in books magazines, and moving pictures under the name of realism, the slime of the gutter and cesspool. My friend, that was 93 years ago. If Robertson were to come back to this earth today, he would be shocked to death back into the grave. The culture in America has decayed to the point of collapse, yet even now, God's word is still true, and even though we may have to search hard and long to find these six Christian ideals, the commandment still stands that we are to dwell, give all of our attention to, to camp out our minds on these things. As the world has plunged even deeper into the cesspool, these six Christian ideals still are. They still do exist in front of us, and we must do everything in our power to jettison the less than things, those good but not great things, and plunge headlong into the world of Christ, which is worthy of our attention, our admiration, our modeling, our respect, and our reverence and exaltation. In other words, we are without excuses. We must decipher the divine life, the life of God, the character of Christ, and then model it ourselves. As you look at the collective whole, what we see laid out before us is a picture of the divine life. And the divine life is possible for every human soul to enter because of the door that Jesus sets before us through his salvation. So, even though many around us may not model these ideals, we must model these ideals. It's interesting to note that these things we will be looking at over the next few Mondays are held in high esteem by all the major philosophers and religions of the world. My friend, God has put it into the soul of man to know that these are non-negotiables in any society that expects to survive and thrive. An ideal refers to a standard or concept of perfection or excellence that's considered the best or most desirable in a particular context. Ideals are often conceptual or aspirational goals that individuals or societies strive to achieve. They represent an envisioned state of excellence, and that's the key. That's why I say that these six words describe the divine life, what it looks like when a person is living in the realm of God. Ancient writers from various cultures and philosophical traditions have written extensively about these divine ideals through the pursuit of virtuous living. My friend, the Apostle Paul's commandment is supported throughout the cultures of the world. The lawlessness that we see videoed on our iPhones today, smash and grabs that lead to the destruction of honest businesses, rioting in the freeway lanes of our major highways, smackdowns, beatings, murders, violence in our classrooms and congressional hearings, sexual abuse, child trafficking, and pedophilia, and on and on are not sustainable ideals. All of the lawlessness we see being lived out before us today will at some point bring about its own end. Of course, 
the worst case scenario of the payback is the cessation of the society. My friend, we must be sober minded and remember that many great societies and empires have gone extinct throughout history. Our country, no country, is eternally resilient to survive against this present outpouring of evil that we see. Each of us must do our part to dwell on these six Christian ideals. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, moral excellence, and praiseworthy, we must stay laser-focused on these things and model them to the world. One historical figure who exemplified these ideals is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who lived from 1906 to 1945, when he was executed at the age of just 39 years old by hanging on April 9, 1945, just a few weeks before the end of World War II. Do you realize that, my friend? He was murdered. He was executed just a few weeks before the war ended. His execution took place at Flossenburg Concentration Camp in Nazi Germany. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, along with other members of the resistance, was executed by hanging on the direct orders of Hitler. Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life and death are remembered as a powerful testament to his commitment to resisting evil and upholding his Christian convictions in the face of tyranny. Bonhoeffer faced the challenges of living in a morally turbulent period. Here's how Bonhoeffer's life reflects the Christian ideals from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Whatever is true, Bonhoeffer was committed to truth and authenticity. He spoke out against the falsehoods propagated by the Nazi regime and stood for the truth of the gospel. Whatever is noble, Bonhoeffer's actions were marked by nobility and honor. He took part in the resistance against Hitler, seeking to protect the dignity and rights of all individuals, regardless of their background. Whatever is right, Bonhoeffer's ethical stance and involvement in the resistance were driven by a deep commitment to what he believed was right. He participated in a plot to assassinate Hitler, believing it was the right thing to do to stop the atrocities of the regime. Whatever is pure, Bonhoeffer's commitment to purity extended beyond personal morality to a pure devotion to justice and the gospel. His theological writings, such as The Cost of Discipleship, reflect a focus on the purity of Christian discipleship. Whatever is lovely, despite the challenging circumstances, Bonhoeffer's actions were marked by a sense of love for humanity. He sought to resist evil with a spirit of love, emphasizing the importance of God's love in the face of hatred. Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Bonhoeffer's courageous stand against the Nazi regime and his sacrifice for his beliefs are widely admired. His commitment to God's will and his willingness to lay down his life for others are considered excellent and praiseworthy. Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life and actions embody the Christian ideals that we see outlined here in Philippians chapter 4. It's no wonder that author and social media giant Eric Metaxas is well known for his epic biography on the life of Bonhoeffer. The story of Bonhoeffer is super pertinent to our lives today. My friend, we are responsible for our habit of thoughts and can hold them to high and holy ideals, despite our present situation. It really is our only hope of survival and revival of our nation and the world. And with that, my friend, I bid you peace.